This is Let's Build a Myrmidon, which is going to be a super weird video featuring some crazy tech like the Gale 4 on an assault ship and Countermeasure Equipment 2, which, by the way, looks worse than any of the recent Countermeasure tech, but there's a very specific reason I'm putting it on here. As I get started, I will say that Kixai has done some super weird stuff. I'm only putting out this video because I don't expect it to change from where it is right now, but if it does, check the pinned comment, and I'm also going to try and likely make a new video if the build changes, but I don't think it's going to, and you'll figure out why I'm saying all this stuff as we get into the video. As I get started, I want to give a huge thank you, to, thank you to channel members who are making things like this video and the build stock possible. If you like the work I'm doing here, the best way to help directly support that is by clicking join, and then you'll get your name on the end screen in the build stock and a bunch of other places. If you want access to my builds, by the way, 100% for free, you can open up the build stock, and that's linked in the YouTube description. Click on the Myrmidon uh, item right here, and that will jump you to these hash codes to copy and paste. It's it's really complicated, it looks like a lot of info right now for the ship, and yes, it is. I'm going to show a video here once I get started talking about countermeasures, talking about why I'm doing what I'm doing with countermeasure equipment 2 and Gale 4, because these things are going to be on my fleet. Countermeasure loader equipment 2 is a tier 4 weapon, some of you might not even have the special I should say, and then Gale 4 is again super weird to have on an assault, but we'll figure out why you have it on here. Before I get into that, I want to go over the whole very briefly. There is a kind of strange special ability. Upgrades are nothing too exciting. It's just really corrosive survival, penetrative survival, damage plus 10%, whatever. And then a few other items here. Uh, you know, CIC is unlocked at E1. The CIC is actually pretty good this time around. It's going to give you combat speed, which is really nice. So that is something you might want to consider uh, as, you're, as you're building this. The attack does have corrosive reload and damage already in here, already pretty high. Just keep in mind that this U2 building damage, it doesn't change the building damage to, two, to plus 2.2 or anything like that. It changes it, it just changes that additional value. It doesn't work like adding a special. Evade is really high to start out with. Combat speed is also kind of high. We're going to want to increase both of those a lot further. I'm going to end up using Hyper 30 for that. Now the interesting special ability is there is a built-in weapon which does 1 million corrosive damage per second. It lasts for about 2, 3, 4 seconds, it doesn't say in here, has a range of, or a splash I should say, of maybe about 20 or 30. So some interesting stuff going on with this weapon, and if you saw my VXP Weekend video, how to rank up your ships with that, you saw it in action a little bit, it's kind of weird and will come into effect more as we're driving. More on that though in a future video, which will be in the raid. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the core build, the things that you can do today that are going to make sense for all three or four of your regular ships, not the flagship yet, we'll talk about the flagship at the end. In terms of weapons, the core build that is safe to go for right now is the Xiphos, again, not sure how you pronounce that, scattergun on four different uh, uh, weapons right here. I'm not putting more than four countermeasures on any single ship, and I don't think I'm going to. Again, once you get this to U1, you can equip the CIC in there that should be fine. And if you don't have this limited scattergun, don't worry, the regular one is hardly any different at all and won't make any difference or changes to this build. In terms of the armors, that's pretty straightforward. I'm going to go for two penetrative and two corrosive. It's possible you want to lean in either direction. There should be, at least if you're following what I'm doing, only damage from the missiles and only damage from the corrosive scatter guns. Out of those, the corrosive scatter guns seem a little bit harsher, so I'm tempted to lean for three corrosive armors. But of course, whatever I put on my ship, it's going to end up leaning in the other direction. Kind of joking there, but I'm just going to go two and two. It shouldn't matter too much. Maybe I'll save some tokens. Maybe I'll get more forsaken mission points. Probably not. I'm just going to go for two and two. If I was guessing, I would say three corrosive. Now, in terms of the specials, there's going to be a few you can put on everything as standard. One of those is going to be your combat speed special, which is your engine, the Thousand Ships engine. This is tier 13. You probably already have it. Came out in pillage, etc. before this. If you don't have this one, don't worry. Use the tier 12.5 one or the tier 12 one. As long as your combat speed matches across all five ships in the fleet, you will do perfectly fine. This gave 66k survival. The tier 12.5 one gave 55k survival, something like that. Very, very small, minute difference, so it doesn't matter which one you use as long as combat speed matches. Survival at this point is just resistance again, wearing a little bit of a mask. So 
that's the engine you want to go for, enough said about that. Now we are going to want to use the ship or the weapon, or the special I should say, that came out of the unlimited one, the Fail for Forge Rounds. This gives you projectile speed, corrosive damage, building damage, and looks to be a direct escalation of the sulfuric AP rounds. There might be something else between those, but I am going to use the Fail Forge Rounds on all ships, and this is going to help antis, it's going to help your scatter guns do more damage. It's just an overall pretty nice special, 100% projectile speed is pretty nice. Okay, a few other things that we're going to want to use here in, you know, let's see, special slot. This next one is going to be jumping back over to, again, the core things that we can trust, that we can for sure use on every single ship. And this is the option of what happens if, if Kickside starts changing things, which I'll get into. You're going to want to use the centrifugal load loading system. This gives you a multi-shot of two. I did look around and tried to compare some ships with a multi-shot of three. Turns out that it wasn't worth going back and using something like scatter system two. And the other problem with scatter system two is it does have a few uh, combat speed issues and stuff like that. And some of these roaring barrel system, etc. Multi-shot of three, corrosive damage, it's a lot lower, so it's not necessarily worth, worth doing. You're better off just using this, this special right here, the tier 11 one. And by the way, if you're curious, here are the sort of comparisons that I did in terms of looking at all this different stuff. You can see I checked scatter system two, I checked centrifugal loading system, and turns out that the damage per second is going to be the best with the build I'm showing you here. Although if you don't want high combat speed, high evade, you can put on full focus choke instead of hyper 30. That's just something for you to play around with. You don't really need to know much about any of uh, this Excel spreadsheet. Okay, back to the rest of the video. That's going to be four special slots that are pretty safe so far. The next one is going to be Corrosive Battery 3. This is actually going to be one of the last slots that is safe for everybody to use. Interestingly, Corrosive Battery 2 stacks with more stuff than Corrosive Battery 3, but it still works out based on how few specials you can actually use. Corrosive Battery 3 is likely the better option. If you wanted to put on Corrosive Battery 2 and put on something like Full Focus Choke, you could do that. As you can see, Full Focus Choke is grayed out when I have Corrosive Battery 3, but if I use Corrosive Battery 2, it is not going to be grayed out here. And let me just show you that real quickly. Corrosive Battery Two, it allows you to use full focus choke, but corrosive battery three does not. And I think that's honestly a little bit unintended, a little weird, but Kixi has not counter, uh, countered me. I've told them that this seems like a bug, it seems weird. One of the mods said it's likely because they both are in the uh, large buff category. I do find it a little bit strange, but it's just an escalation of the previous one. In any case, if you want to do maximum damage, you're probably better off for those two. I'm going to go for Corrosive Battery 3 because I think specials are pretty valuable on this. I'm actually going to fill up the last two specials on all the ships regardless. Okay, the last thing that I'm using on all five of my ships, likely still four ships for the first raid, I don't really ever build the fifth ship till the second run of the TLC, is going to be Hyper 30. And I'm going to use Hyper 30 because I find that combat speed and evade are two really important things in this target. And combat speed is the most important one, in my opinion, with the build and stuff like that I'm showing you. So much of the guaranteed damage is going to be corrosive. You're going to want to have higher combat speed. I'm putting on Hyper 30 for that plus 30% bonus combat speed and the evade is kind of nice. This does mean you have to put it on all five ships in order to match. Uh, so just keep that in mind if you do install this. Now what you're looking at right here is the core build, and before I go any further, I do need to talk about a few other things and show you video and stuff like that in terms of how, how many ships should be uh, countermeasure ships, which type, and how many should be damage ships. Okay, so let's talk countermeasures. You might think by reading the Kixi strategy guide that you should be using MDS-3s. And that's okay, except the Kixi Strategy Guide is kind of wrong. It says that only, or I guess implies, that only penetrative damage type countermeasures are going to work against the UAVs in this target. That's how they've done it for you know months, maybe years at this point, is they say they're going to give the UAVs in that target a, a tag that makes it so that gales cannot shoot at them, makes it so sprints cannot shoot at them, and only MDS-3s can because their damage type is anti-penetrative and the gale is anti-explosive. That is not the case in, in this month's VXP weekend, and I'm hoping they don't change it, or if they do, 
They tell us as soon as possible, ideally like yesterday. Now, MDS-3s are going to be something I'm going to use for the missiles, but I'm going to use Gales for the UAVs. If Kickside changes this, I really, really, really hope that they announce it, and I don't know that they're going to, which is why I recommend most people should wait and not put on any, any Gales or even any countermeasures yet. Wait as long as possible and do it with tokens, like in the first hour of the raid. Go catch DSM stream in that first hour. Wait till at least pillage before you put on your countermeasure ships on there. But I will show you what's working the best in game right now. And that is going to be to use two MDS-3s on a ship right here. And this is going to be able to counter up to essentially 20 incoming missiles every second. You can see the salvo here is 10, which means that a single MDS-3 can shoot at 10 incoming missiles, which by the way, is way more than enough. You don't need to shoot it any more than that. Honestly, you could get away with a single MDS-3. I've said this basically every single assault raid that we've had using MDS-3s, and you know, sometimes people listen, sometimes they don't. That means you can go ahead and fill up the other slots with a limited scatter gun because you know those are just going to be normal damage ones. You don't want to mix UAVs for countermeasure damage types for the reason I'm about to show you. Now, it's actually really important in this case, and it's kind of trippy. You want to make sure that you're keeping your effective range of your MDS-3 is to be under, under 78. Now, why exactly is a little bit of a weird story. You want to keep it under 78 so your MDS-3s do not outrange your gales. And in order to do that, if you put on any of the countermeasure specials that Kickside gave us, like this one right here, the Odyssey decoy system, that's going to give your MDS-3s way too much range. The anti-missile range of plus 75% there is way too high. You need something that's much, much lower. If we look at things like Paterios or the Gala, all this stuff has an anti-missile range. It can be hard to find because there's like six or seven entries here. Anti-missile range is too high there at 77. What we want to do is have one that's pretty low, and it turns out the best option, and no, I'm not joking, is countermeasure equipment two. This has an anti-missile range of plus 37%. Now, yes, the anti-missile accuracy here is lower. You're going to lose out on anti-missile accuracy, which is unfortunate. It's 20% lower, actually, than using the Odyssey decoy system that came with the ship. But I think being able to have Gales take down 100% of every single UAV is going to be more important. So... That's just why I'm using this one. And I'll show you a video of me hitting the VXP targets, uh, just that one cluster of the UAVs with this uh, thing on here. Now, I guess I do need to make a correction because there is one small change that we need to make. I actually need to take off one of these specials. And the one that I'm going to take off is going to be the Corrosive Battery 3 because I'm going to actually, I think that one will come off correctly. I need to put on iron for plating which actually means I'm going to have to take off my Hyper 30, so I guess uh, another few changes there. So Iron for Plating is, a, is actually going to stack with any of the anti-missile specials, and this gives you an extra 20% anti-missile accuracy, so I'm putting it on my anti-ship. Only the anti-missile ship, only that one. You have to take off Hyper 30 because they both have Evade, but I'm putting this one on my anti-ship. Unfortunately, that does mean that we need to get our combat speed back from somewhere, so I'm going to take off corrosive battery and put on a plus 30% combat speed buff. It doesn't really matter which one, because they're all going to be roughly equivalent. As long as it's 30%, we can check limited and see what's over there. Acid diffusion shells is the best option, not because of the supercharge, but because of the plus 20% scattergun reload. If you don't have that one, just use anything else that matches the hyper 30 combat speed of 30%. So this is going to be the anti-missile build, which I'll make sure that you have the updated and most correct version of this build in the build stock. So this is the anti-build. You're going to use one ship built like this one. That's all you need out here. It does a decent amount of damage. It has some scattergun buffs and stuff like that. It matches combat speed with the rest of the fleet. So you'll see here that the movement here is 108. I'm going to save this right here as the, you know, let's see, MDS3, MDS, MYR. I should be able to save that one. So that's going to be the anti-build. 
in terms of the Gale build, we're going to do things a little differently. We're just going to take this MDS-3, and we're going to change that to a Gale for both of those. We're actually going to want to go up with four across the entire fleet. The advantage of using Gales as opposed to MDS-3s is that, and look right here, it says it counters UAV, is that the Gale is going to continue to shoot at an incoming UAV until that UAV is shot down or it starts orbiting around your first ship. That's the advantage of MDS-3s, or of Gales over MDS-3s. You don't want the MDS-3s to outrange the Gales, because as soon as the MDS-3 fires, it tags the projectile and says, nobody else is allowed to shoot at this thing. It's already been shot at once by a missile, anti-missile, so now um, Gales won't fire. This is why Gales need to have a longer range. We can actually change back our settings right here and put, our, put some of our specials back. We're going to put Hyper 30 back on, we're going to put our Corrosive Battery 3 back on, and that should that should work a lot better in terms of matching up with everything else. Now we can actually change our countermeasure special right here, and we can change this to a countermeasure, um, from countermeasure equipment 2, we can do something much more normal. It looks to me like the best option for the Gales is going to be the Paterios defense system, actually, I, I'm sorry, the uh, one of the older ones, Countermeasure Loaders 4, because this has a scattergun reload of plus 25%. So if you look really carefully right here, you can see that the anti-mortar range is plus 77%. If you take the Gale range of right here 44, you take 44 times 1.77, you're going to get an answer that's higher than the MBS-3 range. So 44 times 1.77 is just under 78 if I instead take this Gale, or the MDS-3s, I take the MDS-3 range of 50, which is you know a little lower, uh, which is actually higher initially, and I multiply that by 1.37, I get 68.5, which is lower than 78. So my MDS-3s are going to have a lower range, but they're going to, you know, that's why I'm doing this. Your, your Gales need to have a longer range. So there is the Gale ship. That's very few changes needed from just the traditional uh, set up right here, and I'm just going to go for this one ship of four. I'm not going to split stuff up so I can have damage dedicated. I'm not going to split the stuff up, and I'm not splitting it up so that I can have damage dedicated ships, and this thing's still going to do a little bit of damage. I don't actually need to take off or any more scatter guns than this, and let me show you a video right here of what this actually looks like. So this is a sovereign fleet, and I have it essentially stacked. It's a stacked up fleet. The outer green range you can see right here is the Gale range. And notice that Gales are firing at the incoming UAVs, whereas the MDS-3s, which is the smaller range, is not firing at the MDS-3s. So that's not going to shoot at them at all. Now what you're also seeing right here is that a few, a few UAVs are getting through. This is because I just have four Gales on the fleet and I'm sitting in range of not one, not two, but three turrets. If you're just sitting in range of two, you don't have a single MDS-3 that act, or a single UAV that gets through towards you. So four Gales is enough to basically counter 99% of incoming UAVs when you're sitting under three of them. I don't even think we're going to need to sit under two at the same time in the raid, so four is definitely overkill. It's a safe margin and it's going to do everything you need it to. So that's why I'm going for four, and this is kind of proof here that you're sitting in here, the, the gales as the outer ring are firing first, but when you go kill the riots at the very start of the target, the gales won't fire because those are missiles and the MDS-3 is going to fire, and when they do, you want them to have as high accuracy as possible. There's a short clip to show you that I'm, you know, have tested this, it's not going crazy, and it is working. So let's get back to the, the build here. So that's the Gale one right here. The very last thing I'll do is show you the damage version. It actually should be fairly straightforward for most of you. I'm just going to put back on full scatter guns. Of course, the same CIC goes on everything. And we're going to take this last uh, option right here, this last um, special slot, as I was saying, and weirdly enough, we're going to put on a countermeasure special because well, let's see. Well, this last one, we're going to put on corrosive battery. We're going to put on corrosive battery two, which is the thing I talked about a little bit earlier. Let's see where corrosive battery two go. One right there, and then this special slot number, the last one here, is going to be the full focus choke, which is going to do a ton of corrosive damage. So that's the highest um, damage build right there. And having dedicated CM ships, etc., in addition to making sure that you can stack up completely, not do any weird driving, not need to drive a Gale ship out front, you can stack up and do a ton of full damage to everybody. 
So that, and again, it might be different than what you saw on the build stock. By the time this video goes live, it will be updated. This is the full damage setup. It's using corrosive battery two instead of three because that stacks and it actually works to be really well here. The corrosive damage is going to end up being you know, really high, corrosive damage of plus 3,000%. By the time you have the CIC in your U3, it gets even higher. Hey, so I know this was a really complicated video, but there, there is a bunch of stuff I talked about, and I'm going to go ahead and save this damage build right here. So I'm going to say damage MYR. This was a pretty complicated video. I put a lot of work into it here. If you did uh, think it was valuable, the thing I'm going to ask you to do is share it with your Alliance members. There's a ton of confusion stuff. And if you try and explain to somebody in Alliance chat why you're using countermeasure equipment too, they're probably not going to know what's going on. So I recommend you share this video. Try and help out some other people like that. Of course, I hope Kickside doesn't really change anything. If they do, we'll have to see. The last thing I said I would talk about was the flagship. Uh, you might notice that the armor points here are 100 million. If the flagship comes out, it has like 110 million armor, something like that. It might be worth building it as a high evade tank because the riots and the target uh, at the very start, which are guaranteed damage, have, and, and you can use MDS-3s a little bit, you can use evade a little bit, but they have king killer on them, which means targets the ship with the higher base health. So you could possibly make the flagship a high evade one. The thing I hesitate by doing that is that you're going to lose a lot of damage. I already have two ships that are kind of half damage, half countermeasure. I don't know if I want to do that with a third one, but we'll have to see when the flag comes out. I'm kind of hoping it just has the same base 100 million armor points so that that does not happen, but it theoretically is possible. Okay, so there's the damage setup. I'm going to go for my, when I finish my fleet and have five ships, I'm going to have three damage ships, likely counting the flagship. I'm going to have one ship, which is going to be the Gale ship, and that's going to be for anti-UAVs, which is shown right here. I'm going to have one ship, which is a Missile Defense System 3 ship, using the weirdest special I've used in the past year or two, Countermeasure Loader Equipment 2, Countermeasure Equipment 2, with the really, really important anti-missile range of plus 37% instead of plus 77%, but still getting as high accuracy as I'm able to. And honestly, I have no clue where you get this special if you don't have it. You can do your best to ask in prize requests. Okay, I hope this video was helpful. If it was, go ahead and let me know in the comments down below. And like I said, consider sharing it to your Alliance members. I want to give a huge thank you to the channel members whose names appear on the end screen now. They're helping make videos like this one and the build stock possible. With that said, and until next time, this is going to be Derpy signing out, helping you be a better pirate.